I think we can all agree that there are too many games on Steam these days. They clog up our libraries and searches, making it impossible to find something decent to play. Don't you miss the good old days when Half-Life 2 and Bad Rats were basically the only games on Steam? Well, today we're going back to a simpler time by turning as many games as possible into Half-Life 2. Now, you might be asking yourself, how is this possible? How can we take a game that isn't Half-Life 2 and metamorphosize it into the most perfect game of all time? Well, for that, we're going to need some mods. What are mods? Well, I assume that mod is short for any one of these words, such as modern or modicum. What we do know is that mods modify a game to have aspects that the developers either didn't intend for, didn't think of, or didn't want. Some mods offer quality of life improvements, some add new content, while others add characters and items from other games. If you've ever wished that you could play as Sonic in Skyrim or wield a lightsaber in Dark Souls, then mods are here to help. So the question I'm basically asking is what games have a veritable cornucopia of Half-Life item and character mods so you can pretend you're playing the greatest game of all time even when you're not. So to do this we're going to take a trip to the workshop page for many of the games in my Steam library and see how many of them have Half-Life mods. Well there were fewer Half-Life mods than I thought there'd be. So because of the popularity of Half-Life I thought I would have an easy time turning as many games as possible into clones of Half-Life. But unfortunately today we're only going to be looking at three. I would say that my grand quest fell a little short, but perhaps I just don't own the right kind of games to turn into Half-Life. Up first we have Left 4 Dead 2. Now the most important mod for turning Left 4 Dead 2 into Half-Life 2 is the one that takes all of the common infected in the game and swaps them out for headcrab zombies. Now, this goes a very long way to making the game feel more like Half-Life, although of course the Left 4 Dead zombies and the Half-Life headcrab zombies don't act in a similar way, so it's kind of confusing when you expect them to be much slower, but they still run at you like regular Left 4 Dead 2 zombies. There's also a mod in the game that swaps out the medkits for the Half-Life 2 variety, and a few weapons mods which swap out the weapons in the game for... Half-Life 2 versions. The next game that I checked out was RimWorld. Now RimWorld is a game that's known for its mods, so I was very excited to see what it could do to turn itself into Half-Life 2. And oh boy, did RimWorld deliver. There's this mod called Half-Rim 2 plus Combat Extended Patch, which gives you access to not only Combine factions and Resistance factions in the game, but also many types of Half-Life armor and Half-Life weapons, plus the animals of Half-Life 2, including head crabs and antlions, as well as a bunch of other small Half-Life 2-ifications of the game. So I decided to jump into the game with some Half-Life 2-inspired pawns and see how far I could get. Of course, one thing I did during the world generation was turn down the rain, because of course the Combine are taking water away from the Earth. So, thought that was important. So, my colonists, Gordon, Judith, and Barney, all crash-landed in an arid shrubland, and we began setting up a small base of operations. For some reason, there's also a horse with us. Uh, I don't think that's part of the mod, that's just something that happens in RimWorld. But I'm sure they'll do a good job taking care of the horse. So for the first few minutes, everything was going well. You don't see a ton of the Half-Life mod stuff right away because there's a lot of content even in the base RimWorld. So some mods struggle to sort of replace that with their content. I did check the world map, I made all of the factions either resistance or combine, and the combine definitely hate us, and the resistance for some reason are neutral to us, even though we have Gordon Freeman among our company. While building our base, uh, we encountered our first problem, an antlion guardian was hunting our horse. 
Now, having played Half-Life 2, I know that Gordon Freeman can easily take down an Antlion Guardian. So I sent him and his team out to swiftly take care of it. Now, after missing all of their shots, they were slowly picked off by the Antlion Guardian. Now, some of this was my fault for accidentally letting the Antlion into the base when I attempted to rescue one of the pawns, but what can you do? That's Rimworld. Maybe I'll return to this one day because it's actually quite fun to play Rimworld as Half-Life, so maybe there will be more videos about that in the future. The final game that I was able to find a decent number of Half-Life 2 mods for is XCOM 2. XCOM 2 does have a bunch of mods, though a lot of them are locked behind some DLC that I don't have, so I was a little bit limited, which was disappointing. But if you do happen to have that DLC, you'll have a lot more options for making your game more like Half-Life 2. So most of the mods in this game are focused on voice packs and modifying the look of your in-game characters. And look, they even have a Gordon Freeman voice pack. And yes, it does exactly what you think it does. Unfortunately, some of the mods I downloaded didn't work. But I was able to add head crabs to the heads of some of my soldiers and make them sound like Father Grigori. So I suppose that is a win. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am serious about returning to Half-Life 2 in RimWorld because that actually looked really interesting. So let me know if you'd like to see a deeper video on that. And I will see you next time for more Half-Life 2 hijinks.